Is it reasonable or even responsible to keep several different species of reptiles in the same enclosure together? Well, yes, it is. And today we're gonna go over the top five community reptiles. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wicked Think of Reptiles, stick around. I would like to make something very clear because this is a very controversial subject and I'm sure the comments are going to be lit up. So here it is. Always do your research first. Me making this video is not enough information for you to put anything together that might not occur in nature or anything that is of a different species altogether. Before we get into the list, a few ground rules if you're gonna do this. Make sure whatever species you're gonna keep together are not going to eat each other, are of similar size to avoid predation most of the time, and come from similar environments. And as part of this list, I wanna go over some common ones and some less common ones, starting with number five, tortoises like this guy right here. This is a red foot tortoise. It's actually a cherry head tortoise, but same thing, neither here nor there. And tortoises can actually do really well at cohabbing. They can cohab with many different species, but it depends what type of tortoise you have. Now this is a cherry head. So a cherry head has a higher humidity level. I wouldn't put these with something like a rock iguana, which has a lower humidity level just simply because one's gonna have the perfect environment and the other one's not, or you're gonna be like trying to split the difference, and that's not really a good idea. Or even a better example, since we're here, Diamond's a bearded dragon, low 20, 30, 40% humidity level. This guy here needs 70, 80, 90% humidity, so you couldn't put them together. Even though they wouldn't prey on each other and it would be safe from that standpoint, this guy would not be happy, or this guy wouldn't be happy, or both wouldn't be happy. And I'll put this guy away in a second, but let's start off with a cherry head tortoise or a red foot tortoise. You could keep them with other similar tortoises, like a yellow foot tortoise, for example, or if you wanted to, you could keep them with an arboreal type of snake that wouldn't eat them. Something like a boa constrictor, boa imperator, something like that, some arboreal type of snake that has a similar humidity level, and in fact, if you kept them with a boa, a BC, CI or BI, I guess they're called now, or BCC or BC, then that's actually perfect because a BC is likely not going to eat this guy. Oh, sorry. And these guys are going to be on the ground. A BC is going to be in the trees mostly, although they will be on the ground as well. There, there's going to be no sort of predation. There's going to be no fighting for food either because these guys are mostly herbivores, although redfoots and cherry heads, they will eat a little bit of protein. I'll put you back. You did really good though. Great job. Another great tortoise example, and I'll make this a lot shorter, is a Greek tortoise with something like a rhino iguana or a rock iguana. You see this on Camp Kennan's channel all the time. I'm sure you're aware of that channel. And that's actually a really great way to do it because they come from similar climates, although they would actually never experience each other in nature because they're not from the same part of the world. They have very similar climates. Just like the same reason that I can keep Bob the Jeweled Lacerda outside in Canada, even though you'd find him and say, Spain and places like that, part of uh, Europe, where it's gonna be warm and some sort of like subtropical type of climate. Well, that's what it is here in the Niagara region of Ontario, Canada during the summer. Very similar climates, and that's why it works. And the most obvious, you can keep similar tortoises. I, I mentioned that earlier. Another great example is leopard tortoises and sulcatas. Be careful because some sulcatas can be a little bit territorial, but the number one rule after you've done your preliminary research to keeping anything together, even the same species, is observation. You have to make sure that you observe. Always observe and make sure there's no issues before you just kind of let it go. All right, let's speed this up a bit. Let's go to number four, an amphibian this time, actually, and something we've never spoken about on this channel before, Spanish rib newts. These are very wild looking, and the example I'm gonna use, I actually see at my local reptile shop in a paludarium, and he's had them there for like four or five years. These guys work great in paludariums, meaning there's a water area and a land area and sort of like a higher up tree arboreal type area. And the example that I see in my local reptile shop when I walk in there, first thing, big giant paludarium, which is another great rule of thumb for any of these species or any cohabitation, always use much larger enclosures than you would normally use for just one species or just one animal. In this paludarium, he's got Amazon milk frogs, he's got the Spanish rib newts, he's got fish in there as well, and he's got giant day geckos. 
And the reason this works is because although the Spanish rib newts do need a kind of cooler temperature in the water, the day geckos don't need such a hot temperature that on their basking spot, where it is a perfect temperature, it doesn't radiate so much into the water that the water heats up too much in order to make it not livable for the Spanish rib newts. And yes, Spanish rib newts look a lot like axolotls. There's no doubt about it. They're awesome. They are different, however. And because these guys are newts and not salamanders, they're not even like closely related at all. So my suggestion is put them in the water. They can do well with fish, which they actually do much better with fish in the water than an axolotl would, much better. And if you have something that likes to live up in the trees or up uh, like on the glass, I guess, like say a day gecko, you could do that as long as that animal doesn't prey on newts. Like day geckos do not prey on newts. Amazon milk frogs do not prey on newts and none of them prey on each other. So it works. Something cool about the Spanish rib newts, they are called Spanish rib newts because they use their ribs for defense. They will literally poke their ribs out of their skin. It's like, like a horror movie. Ah, That's ah, it. Don't! Yeah the craziest thing and they're kind of use those as like these poisonous barbs it is crazy it is absolutely wild i think these things are absolutely awesome and i will probably talk about them again on my channel with the spanish rib newt you might even get away with a small arboreal colubrid something like a rough green snake or a smooth green snake that won't eat something of this size because a spanish rib newt would be too big for them and most of the time these green snakes rough or smooth scale green snakes are not going to be going in the water to feed they're going to feed mostly on insects actually and you know small critters things like that but spanish rib newts are aquatic and usually too big as long as they're not babies. Again, make sure everything is of a size where you're gonna avoid predation. Number three, turtles, aquatic turtles. And the reason that I say aquatic turtles cause box turtles are not in this discussion. Let's focus on things like Mississippi map turtles and yellow belly sliders, things like that, because you can keep these together. Oftentimes you can keep placid type species, painted turtles, red ear sliders, whatever, together and oftentimes these guys will see each other in nature. So it just works. Similar diet, similar water parameters, similar water temperature, things like that, right? So it makes it really easy, but you can also keep things like fish together. Now I wouldn't recommend Spanish rib newts most of the time because I know for sure Buggy, my yellow belly slider would eat them. He tries to eat the fish, but the fish are too fast. So that's the thing is you wanna make sure that your fish are fast enough in order to put them with turtles. If you want me to do a whole video on best fish to keep with turtles, I would love to. I love keeping fish in my turtle tank. It's just so much fun to watch because you get these larger type species you can watch and you have these smaller, faster species to watch as well. I personally think this is fascinating. Oftentimes with certain species of turtles, you can also keep different types of shrimp. And sometimes you can also keep things like snails in there as well. It just depends. Again, I will say it over and over. Do your research. The Mr. Clean looking guy behind the camera is not enough information telling you this can go with this. It can go, but doesn't mean that it should necessarily. And there's always way more risk cohabbing anything, even the same species, than keeping animals alone. All right, number two, we're gonna ruin the list with a second amphibian, the last one, I promise, tree frogs of many different species. Now, bigger tree frogs, something like a white's tree frog usually isn't a great option just because they're big and they will put anything in their mouth that can fit in their mouth. So this is a bad idea. The better options would be things like red-eye tree frogs or even Vietnamese mossy frogs. You could have something kind of cool like an Amazon milk frog or an American green tree frog, a lemur tree frogs, tiger leg monkey frog. Like you get the idea, right? There are many, many different types of tree frogs that you can keep not only together with other tree frogs, do your research what goes with what and do your observation, but you can also keep them with things like house geckos or long tail lizards, or you can keep them in paludariums where down below you've got fish, things like that. This is overall a pretty darn common one and it actually leads into number one, something that you see almost always in a community tank. Number one, anoles, especially green anoles because they're bright, they're beautiful, they're very fun to watch, and they're very fast, which is why it works. And you're gonna keep them oftentimes with other species like green tree frogs, or basically other types of tree frogs that won't eat them or won't be eaten by them, or house geckos, or long tail lizards, things like that that actually work 
really, really well. I've even seen people keep green anoles with things like tortoises, cherry heads, which is kind of risky because a cherry head might eat one if it could catch it, which it probably won't. I've seen people keep them with boas, right? Which, because very similar type of an environment. I'm not advocating this, I'm just saying that I've seen it, but for sure you can see time and time again a successful cohabitation with things like house geckos and long tail lizards and tree frogs and things like that. Planted vivariums, lots of space to climb, big enclosures so that there's not, you know, kind of like a territory dispute or they're so on top of each other, they're stressed out. I think it can work really, really well with green anoles. And some people even will keep, and I don't recommend, but some people will keep things like rough or, or smooth green snakes with them. I think that it, there's too much of a risk there of being eaten, but some people do it and green anoles are fast enough usually to evade them. And most green snakes won't try to eat an anole, but it can happen, just be aware of that. Okay, before we wrap this up, free stuff. If you like free stuff, we are drawing for 10, this is five, 10 free shirts at 100,000 subscribers, which we're getting really close to. All you have to do to enter, very simple, no purchase required, go like the Instagram page, hit thumbs up on this video, and leave a comment with this emoji, and you have to be subscribed. That's it, a few clicks of your mouse, don't have to spend any money, and at 100K, live on a live stream, 10 free shirts, doesn't matter where you are in the world, whatever t-shirt you want, I'll make sure it gets to you if you win. So there you go. Those are your top five communal reptiles or community reptiles or whatever we called it. I hope that you enjoyed it and there are more. So if you want a part two, let me know in the comment section below. I would love to make it. Or if you think I did something wrong in this video, something that doesn't fit, something that's a better fit, let me know. I would love to know and maybe make a second video. So I wanna say thank you so much to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking awesome. Without you guys, this would be a lot harder and it wouldn't be as much fun to get new animals because I let you guys know about animals in my collection that I don't let anybody know about for months sometimes. So thank you guys very much. And for everyone who took the time to hit like, hit subscribe, this is a like also, hit subscribe. You guys are awesome also. And because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Thursday.